Hi guys, good evening to all. Uh, we welcome you all in this day four of Gen AI series. Uh, as this is the last webinar of this series, uh, we will be having the topic on generative AI with Azure Open AI Service and beyond. Guys, till the time we are starting with the webinar, I will be posting the details in the chat box for the social media platforms and for the communities on which we do update the uh, upcoming webinars and workshops. So you, if you want to follow us on our social media platforms, you all can go and get the link in the chat box. We'll be starting the webinar uh, in few minutes. Thank you. Uh, participants, those have connected just now, please note we are waiting for other participants to join in. Uh, till the time we have shared the links in the chat box for our official websites, for the social media platforms and the communities. You all can go and follow us on our social media platforms and our communities. Also, the YouTube channel link has been mentioned in the chat box. Guys, you all can go and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well as we are planning to upload the series. On our YouTube channel. So you all can go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You will get the recording for this Gen AI series. In few days on our official channel.
Swanand, the badge for today's webinar is AI 102. Uh, it is the same which we have shared with you all in day one. We have shared two badges on day one that is AI 900 and AI 102. So if you are yet to get that batch activated, I have shared the URL in the chat box. In this whole series, we have shared three batches. Uh, AI 900, which is for Azure Fundamental. Then we have shared AI 102. And AI 050. So guys, if you are interested in getting all the batches activated, the links are in the chat box. You all can go and get the batch activated. Uh, Any one of you are yet to get the batch activated. I have shared the batch links in the chat box for three of the batches. AI 900, which is Microsoft Azure AI Fundamental. Then I have shared AI 102 for designing and implementing uh, Microsoft Azure AI solution. And I have shared AI 050, which is DevOps Generative AI solution with Azure Open AI services. Guys, please note that this all of the batches are important for this Gen AI series. Those who have attended all the four webinars in this Gen AI series will get the study material and modules regarding these topics in this batch. So you have to get that batch activated to revise or to get the study material. Get the access of the study material. Uh, let's get started with the webinar now. 
Uh, hello and welcome you all in this generative AI with Azure Open AI Service and Beyond webinar. Uh, please note this is the fourth webinar of Gen AI series, and this is the last webinar in this series. Uh, myself, Shaitali, I will be the host for this webinar. Also, please note me, my team and our speaker is there to help you out throughout this session. You all can post your questions and queries in the chat box so we can go and help you out. Then as you all know, uh, Synergetics is the sponsor for this event's webinars. So Synergetics is an India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. Uh, Synergetics do believe in delivering trainings to solve customers pain point by crafting cutting edge learning solutions. Solutions on which Synergetics do provide training that are persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution. Then we have certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, then latest technology training solutions, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution and architecting solution. Then you will get trained with the help of us. We'll, we do provide learning services. It will give you experience. You will get trained, build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified. Then we have skilling journey. Under the skilling journey, we have three type of certification that is fundamental, advanced role base and expert level of certifications. In fundamental certification. We have certification on AI AZ 900 AI 900. Then we have DP 900, PL 900 and SC 900. In second level of the certification, that is role based certification, we do provide certification trainings on AZ 104, AZ 204, AI 102, DP 203. Then we have PL series and SC series. And in expert level certification, we have AZ305, Azure Solution Architect Expert. Then we have SC100, Cybersecurity Architect Expert. Then we have PL600, Power Platform Solution Architect Expert. And AZ400, DevOps Engineer Expert. Uh, participants, those who are interested in getting certified in any of the certification uh, do connect with us. The details are mentioned in the chat box for you all. Then what certification will do? Certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. We also do provide certification add ons, onboarding add ons like short duration modules and more. Then today's training is organized and handled by ATC community that is Azure Tech community. This ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technologies. Also, we have different kind of communities like emerging technology community for all. Then we have Azure Tech community Pune, specifically for Pune curse. Then emerging, emerging technology community Surat for Surat, Suratis. Then we have Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpur curse. Uh, you just have to simply install the Meetup app on your phone or on your device to get this communities followed. The community links has been mentioned for you all in the chat window. So you all can go and follow us to get the relevant updates on the upcoming webinars, workshop, training which we do. Code of conduct, please note you all are not allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording. 
also this uh, recording will be provided to you all those who have participated in this gen ai series will get this recording also we'll try to upload it on our official youtube channel for that you have to subscribe to the youtube channel youtube channel link is there in the chat box Uh, we have Mr. Navjoti Barua with us today. He is an MCT Microsoft certified trainer and currently work with Synergetics as a web AVP of technology department. Uh, he has 50 plus years of experience in software development and consulting and more. Then the agenda of this webinar will introduce you to Azure OpenAI services and more. Then as I have mentioned uh, for this webinar, we are providing AI 102 learning achievement batch. Uh, those who have attended the day one of this series, they must be knowing that we have shared AI 900 and AI 102. It is the same. Those who have activated, it is not necessary to go and click on the link again as they have activated the batch. But those who are new in this uh, series, please note we have shared AI 102 achievement batch in the chat box. The procedure is the same. You have to go create your learn account. If you don't have click on the redeem button to get the batch activated. Under this batch, you will get study material modules related to the topic. Also, you can share this batch on LinkedIn and other profiles. And don't forget to uh, do follow. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and also do subscribe to our YouTube channel. The links has been mentioned in the chat box for you all. Uh, it will uh, give you an updates on upcoming webinars, workshops and trainings which Synergetics provide. That's all. Thank you all for listening to me. Now I will hand over the mic to our speaker, Mr. Namjoti, so he can share his expertise and insights on the topic. Thank you all once again for kind attention. Thank you very much, uh, Chaitali, for uh, your brief introduction. So let's get started. So I'll be sharing my PPT. So hope everybody can hear me and everybody can see my PPT. So let me set the context what we are going to discuss in today's webinar. As you can see the title of this today's webinar on generative AI with Azure open AI service and beyond. And I know that uh, you have already attended a couple of uh, the training, the web webinar on Gen AI right from so what precisely a Gen AI and their respective applications, how the Gen AI can bring benefit to your day to day life or maybe to enhance the productivity to your business. So there are multi dimensional benefit that we are going to get uh, from the generative AI going forward. So generative AI could be applicable to the the leaders within an organization, or maybe for the developers, or maybe for, 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 for managers. So every stakeholder of or every role that the organizations have today, the generative AI is going to contribute or generative AI is going to enhance the productivities to their day to day work they have been doing so far. So now since we know the concept, we have been learning different concepts and then applications areas and technology behind the gen AIs and so on and so forth. And today primarily we are going to look at 
the one of the implementation. Like we go into a particular platforms and the tools and try to see how the Gen AI can enable. The different. Functionalities in our traditional application or the application that we would be developing in the near future. So practical implementations or practical. Use of Gen AI using a particular platforms and the services and the tools and that would be the primary focus of the today's webinar. My name is Navjoti Barua. I work as an AVP technology at Synergetics. I'm an MCT and the cloud solution architect. So I have been working with or working on multiple technologies from the .NET to React and a platform like Azure and AWS. So I'm certified uh, from the Microsoft range of certificates, as you can see right from the Azure administrator to Azure AI engineer. Now let's come back to the today's uh, agenda, what we are going to cover, what we are going to look at. The first we are going to talk about generative AI. So in fact, the Gen AI is being discussed in the previous webinar also, but I'll be just taking you through quickly in context of what we are going to do today. So it could be a bit of repetitions that you have already learned from the previous webinar that you have attended so far. Then we get into the, as I said, the practical implementations using Microsoft Cloud Platform who has offered or who has come up with the open AI services. Basically, to implement the Gen AI capabilities, we have to subscribe to the open AI services and those services we can incorporate from our application. To bring those capabilities, what we have been discussing out of the box from the Gen AI. The another important aspect for the developers or an architect or anybody who's supposed to use a Gen AI capabilities. So how responsible it would be because it is an AI technology. So you can. Actually do according to your need so you can implement the AI technology for destroying something or you can use the AI technology to build something. So it could be a constructive way of using AI or it could be a destructive way of using AI. So how responsible you would be going forward? So when you think of implementing generative AI back in your application. So your primary objective of using the Gen AI would be enhancing the productivities, taking away most of the job from the human that is being human who really go and kind of uh, do those job and now those job would be taken over by artificial intelligence based application. So it precisely, you know, you are going to delegate the task from the human to an application. And in what context the delegation is going to happen to the application? That is what we are going to discuss. There may be different contexts. There may be different use cases where the Gen AI will step in and replace a human going forward or in the near future. But this session is not about only theory or only just concept or only just talking about the technology, but we'll go and practically look at or we are going to go and see how. Practically use a Gen AI service by working with few demos, the couple of demos that I would like to walk you through. Then you'll get to know the technology who basically enable the capability of the Gen AI. So there may be multiple technology in the platform around us. 
but we are going to pick up what is being done by Microsoft on Microsoft Cloud Platform, that is Microsoft Azure, in order to work with generative AI capabilities. So our primary focus of this particular training, I mean this particular webinar would be the technology around Microsoft Cloud Platforms in order to implement generative AI capabilities in our application, in our day-to-day -day activities that typically we do as a role that we play within an organization. So let's get started with the first point, as I said, fundamental of Gen AI. Now you all of you know that the Gen AI backbone is a large language model, the LLM. And those LLM enable the AI application and the service to generate original content based on natural language input, what we call as a prompt. So you'll be writing a prompt, you'll be giving an instruction to the AI, and the AI will respond based on your prompt, based on your queries, the request. Now, another important uh, aspect that you are going to learn during this. Uh, the conversation now the Gen AI is being applic applicable. Or Gen AI. Powered applications is also made available from Microsoft, and that is what we call as a co-pilot. Now, co-pilot become a kind of assistant to the human in creative task. Whenever the humans wants to do creative task, now co-pilot become an assistant to the human. They can do that creativity job pretty quickly. With the help of Gen AI capabilities, and a human can create all kind of creative content they wanted to have from the different uh, the use cases or different requirement, different problem statement. So that is something what we are going to discuss as a co-pilot. The AI powered co-pilot would be also going to include during this uh, conversations, during this particular uh, webinar. Now, having said that, when you talk about generative AI and it is basically the generative AI is a subset of a traditional AI. Artificial intelligence. And generative AI primarily going to focus on creating new content based on the user input. Now what would be those content? The content could be writing an applications for you. With a particular subject. Write an essay on a particular topic, creating a blobs for you on a particular subject. Working with the summarizations of an email or a conversations in a call center. So what would be the ultimate summary that we can extract from a conversations? So this is what basically the ultimate content generations that we are referring to. Under the banner of the generative AIs. The most of the thing is going to happen in a form of conversational AI. So we are going to start conversing with our application. So when you start doing the conversation, so we are going to ask questions and application is going to give us a response. But in order to give the response by an application, the applications need to be trained. What I'm asking that application is capable of learning that questions and response accordingly making no mistake. So behind that applications or behind that particular capabilities. And we always go and refer to a model, the machine learning model, but this is special. State of art model that is being used by Gen AI is called large language model. So the net net if you summarize that capability of generative AI today, so it can be in three category. 
The first is the natural language generation. It is being used to generate the natural language response you might submit as a request. Like for example, you can go and ask the Gen AI, give me three ideas for a healthy breakfast, including a fruits or something like that. So your Gen AI will come back and give you the three different ideas for an healthy breakfast with all kind of ingredients that you can put together to prepare the breakfast. But there would be permutation and combinations that they are going to give you because you have asked for three different options. So this is a kind of natural language generations. You know how we talk to our friend. The similarly, I can go and talk to my AI application. So it means the AI application need to understand the natural language that I'll be using with my friends, with my colleagues, with my uh, the family, uh, you know. So this is how you would be treating your application. It's just another human who understand your need and subsequently respond to your need, to your queries, to the questions that you ask. The another one is the image generations. That is also another part of the Gen AI. Now, under the image generations, the applications can interpret a natural language request and generate an appropriate images. For example, you can go and ask, create an image of an elephant eating a burger. You can do anything. You can, you can ask anything because you wanted to see an image of an element uh, of an elephant when while he is eating a or she is eating a burger. Kind of stuff. So it your imaginations like you need to express your imaginations. You will be writing in a form of. Prompt and it will go into the image generations and subsequently the Gen AI is capable of generating that particular image for you. Then the last one is the code generation. There may be a couple of more, but I'm just speaking of the the main capability of generating AI, the code generation. So this is specifically for the developer. Not today, the lot many code is available in GitHub. So as a developer, we can go and keep looking at those GitHub and keep finding an appropriate code that I want to use in my applications to solve a problem. For rather than doing on your own, you know, doing all kind of permutations, combinations by by going into a different repository, by looking at the different code, combining them and making them use from your application. Is a very tedious job to eliminate that so you can take help of the Gen AI and asking equations what you want, what kind of code that you are looking for. So for example, so show me how to code a game of a tic-tac-toe with Python. So how to code to, to create an application for a specific game and you can mention the language that you want to use, like here we are saying with Python. Or write a functions, add a two numbers and return the sum in Python. I'm just hypothetically, I'm just talking about the kind of code you might be looking at. So this is a pretty quick way of getting the code. From the developer. Need point of views because the developer has to implement different type of code. Different type of uh, logic, the business logic. But they might have written in the existing code somewhere in the GitHub because the model that is being used by the Gen AI is being trained on the millions of billions of codes that is made available in the Internet and a GitHub. So somewhere, whatever the questions that you are asking 
for generating a code, they should be able to create the appropriate response to your request, to your prompt by providing an absolute code that you should be able to incorporate those code back in your applications, what precisely have you have looked for. I think these are the very powerful way of implementing generative AI in today's context, the modern applications, the modern kind of uh, the workload for modern business who really need of an artificial intelligence at this moment to enhance the productivities, to eliminate the bottlenecks they have in context of the efficiency, in context of uh, the capabilities and so on and so forth. So it means you are investing on the AI for bringing the kind of the human intelligence which was done by the human today, it is done by the AI. That is something very, very interesting to all of us. And that's why the AI becoming one of the most popular technology around us today. Everybody is talking about an AI. Right from a different, the business stakeholder to a kind of the education, so who is imparting an education, a marketing, sales and marketings, or maybe in retail, or it may be hospitalities, or it may be uh, medicines everywhere. I mean, it may be manufacturing, it may be a BFSI, or a any 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 kind of business today need an AI to be actively used. Because the benefit of using AI would be immense going forward, and that is what we have understood so far. Because as of now, it is just an innovation. The people, the technology is with us. AI as a technology was, you know, uh, introduced to us long back, but the Gen AI is a recent technology. The generative AI is a recent technology, and people are started aligning with this Gen AI, bring their capabilities, incorporating into their business applications to see the result right away. But one thing is we always remember that, as I said before also, the AI can be used to do the destructions or AI can be used to do the construction. Now, which way you would like to use an AI? So you have to take a call and that's how the responsible AI will be. Another subject through which your activities on the AI need to be controlled for the, the betterments or for the, you know, uh, creating a kind of place for the human mankind that uh, we can take them to the next level in the positive directions, not in the negative directions. So having said that, as I say, uh, as I said before, and all kind of capabilities that I was talking about by giving an example in context of code generations, in context of image generations, in context of content generation. As I said, the backbone of all the capabilities is LLM, language, large language model. So they are very unique in, in the ecosystem of machine learning models. So machine learning model is not something new to us. It is there for quite some time, like, you know, but uh, today we talk about LLM, which is the advanced version of the small language model that we have been using with the traditional machine learning. So it is all about the mathematical principles the llm is being used but to get inside that it could be a pretty complex so it may not be your job at this moment so how the llm was created what kind of mathematical principle is being used behind the llm it's really robust at this moment we have no clue but we must understand one thing what is the architecture 
or what kind of architects are being used in LLM that who can understand what basically you are looking for by just providing a natural language. And that is something very, very important because as a user, as a consumer, we just need to know how to use LLM. What would be the limitation of an LLM? So how far we can go while I'm using an LLM in different contexts, as we see in the previous deck. Whether you are generating a code, whether you are generating an images, whether you are generating different kind of content based on the prompt, the based on your queries that you have asked. So there are few components of the LLM. So I will take you through briefly with those components. The first component is the transformer model. Now LLM is being designed by the transformer model. Because we know the machine learning models for a natural language processing have evolved over many years. The machine learning is not today's technologies. It's many years the machine learning is around us. But today's cutting edge large language model are based on the transformer architecture, which build on and extend some techniques that have been proven successfully in modeling vocabularies to support NLP task and in particular generating languages, generating text. So those transformer model, as I said, it's a, it's a transformer model. LLMs are transformer model. Those transformer models are trained with a large volume of text, enabling them to represent the semantic relationship between the word and use those relationship to determine the probable sequence of text that makes sense to the end user. So transform a model with a large enough vocabulary are capable of generating language response that are taught to distinguish from the human responses or maybe that are maybe something like you know most of the time you won't be able to make up whether this response is being generated by or maybe written by a human or generated by ai application because it is more closely what the human can do i mean like you know it is almost the same way the human can think a human can respond to a particular queries like as i said before you give a subject and tell the Gen AI LLM to write a letter describing that particular subject to a particular individual or to a head of the institute or whatever it may be, to whom you're supposed to address. You just need to mention everything while you are writing the prompt. The rest would be taken care of automatically by the Gen AI in order to give you an appropriate output that you're supposed to get. So in practice, the specific implementations of the architecture may be varies. For example, the bidirectional encoder, representations from the transformer, model developed by Google to support their the search engine uses only the encoder block, but while generative Retain transformer that is GPT, what we call as the GPT model developed by OpenAI. OpenAI is an independent organization. Use only the decoder block. So it is depends. So how the encoder block, as you can see, which is the two block, which is part of the transformer model, encoder and decoder. So decoder is used by the OpenAI, which is GPT. It's a, you know, essentially we call it a chat GPT today, but GPT is generative pre-trained transformer model, which was developed by 
OpenAI, as I said, they are independent vendor. And now Microsoft has invested on the OpenAI and the Microsoft is going to use the technologies that is being developed, that is being created by OpenAI going forward. That is a tie up between the OpenAI and the Microsoft today. But coming back to the transformer model, so, so when it was used by the Google initially, so they use the encoder block, but OpenAI used the decoder block. So this is two blocks belongs to the transformer model. So this is just an inner understanding of uh, LLM because the LLM is based on the transformer model. It is a transformer model and which is basically architect with the two main component or a block as you can see. The another important thing is of, of your large language model would be Uh, or maybe uh, this tokenizations. But before we get into the tokenizations, while a complete explanations of every aspect of a transformer model is beyond the scope of this this conversation, like we cannot go and talk about all the details about the transformers. I'm trying to give you a brief, the technical input by breaking down the LLM starting with transformer model. So second one would be the tokenizations under the LLM. So basically in the tokenization process, like tokenizations, uh, the process, like how it's supposed to be tokenized. The first steps in the training a transformer model is to decompose the training text into a tokens like this. OK, so these are the token. In other words, identify its unique text values by assigning a numbers like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as you can see. And this is the very simple way you can think of each distinct word in the training text would be called as a token, one token. Though in reality, the token can be generated for a partial word or a combinations of word and the punctuations, like that could be it can be something like this. So the set of characters or one word may be sometime it can go with the two words. So it is depends like how the tokenization would be uh, done by the LLM. But yes, the inner inner working of the LLM on the input text is breaking into a token and assigning a number to those a token and token is nothing but a text which is a broken piece of those texts that is being put to the, the Gen AI, to the LLM. So as you continue to train the model, each of the new token in the training text is added to a vocabulary with an appropriate token ID. This is the numeric number we call as a token IDs. That token would be identified by this particular ID. One, two, three, four. So dog is represented by four. A is represented by three. So with sufficiently large set of training text, a vocabulary of many thousands of tokens could be compiled in order to do this kind of operations what we are looking at. The last. The process like which has happened under the banner of LLM is called embedding. So 
So what is basically an embedding as you can see while it is maybe convenient to represent the tokens as a simple ID from the previous DAG, but essentially creating an index for all the words in the vocabulary. They do not tell us anything about the meaning of those words or the relationship between them. We don't get to know it is just a tokenization. We have to find the relations among them, how it can be presented back into the user. To create a vocabulary that encapsul encapsulate the semantic relationship between the token. So LLM is going to define a contextual vector. This is called contextual vector. And it is known as an embedding. For them, the vector are multi-valued numeric representation of information. For example, 1013, where you can see. So 1013s, that is the vector representations, as you can see. So in which the its numeric element represent a particular attributes of an information. For language, the tokens, each element of the tokens vector represents some semantic attributes of the token. The specific category for this element of the vector in the language model are determined during the training based on how commonly words are used together or in a similar context. So the two point that is going to be evaluated in the training, how commonly the word is being used together or in similar context. So like how human learn. So this is same way the LLM model would be created by learning from those token by finding the relationship between them among them and how precisely they are used in a common situations in a in a similar context. So this is something what is being represented internally. So there would be other internal implementation also like uh, in the token embedding the vector as a coordinates in the multidimensional spec so that each token occupied a specific location. The closure tokens are to one another along a particular dimensions. The more semantically related they are. In the other word, the related words are the group closure together. So as I said, you know it is related. So you can make a meaning out of that related word going forward. And uh, finding the locations in the vector which was represented by a number. Yeah, so like the locations of the token also in the embedding spec include some more information about how closely the tokens are related to one another. That is something like the internal implementation of the embedding what we are discussing at this moment. So for here example token for dog is closer to cat and also to bark. You can see that the token for cat and the bark are close to mew. The token for scatboard is a farther away from the other tokens. So this is something like you know what uh, how your LLM is going to go and learn from those tokenizations what we have discussed so far. So finally the last one about the LLM would be the attentions. So the encoder and the decoder block in the transformer model include the multiple layers that forms the neural network for that particular model. 
So we do not need to go into the detail of all of this layer. How it's work. It is not possible also. But it is always useful to consider. One of the types of the layer that is used. In both blocks. And that layers is called as an attention layer. So attention is a technique used to examine a sequence of text token and try to qualify uh, quantify the strength of the relationship between them. That is the attentions, which is part of this, the whole process while that LL LLM was produced or created. In particular, the self attentions involved considering how other tokens around one particular token influence that token's meaning. So it's basically, as I said, the attentions is going to examine the sequence of text token and try to quantify the strength of the relationship between them. And that makes everything possible. That makes to create an appropriate outcome, the result based on the queries or based on the prompt the user has supplied. So there are many internal kind of implementations or we can talk more on this, but this is not a kind of subject that we have to go in the depth at this moment, but I'm trying to walk you through with the underlying concept of the LLM because the LLM is the backbone for the Gen AI. Whichever way and whatever way that you are going to use Gen AI tomorrow, but that is always backed by the LLM. But under which circumstances, under which kind of, uh, you know, the architecture, the LLM was worked, the model was created. Because the LLM is going to produce the most accurate, the outcome that you are looking for, for generating content. It could be in a form of code, it could be in a form of images, or it could be in a form of text. But the most important is that how accurate it could be, because everybody is looking up to that. We need accuracies so while I'm asking something to an application, because they are acting as a human today, not as an application. So people started banking on those applications. Like we need to talk about more on that also because we also need to understand the limitation of those applications. So how far we can go and keep asking the questions that applications, the AI applications can respond to us. And that need to be known. It should be transparent to the end user. So end user will be working with the AI system with a guidelines. What is possible and what is not possible. So having said that, this was kind of inner working or we can say the internal architecture of a LLM, large language model. And I talked about along with the Gen AI, the direct benefits that we are getting from the Gen AI, like to generate the contents or generate the image or generate the code. But along with that, we have another product called Copilot. Now, what Copilot is going to do for us? The Copilots are based on the common architecture. And in fact, the today's developer can also build their own Copilot for various business specific applications and the service. So you may have come across the Copilots within the products that you already use, for example, as a as a kind of uh, a bot who basically being used for a conversations. And uh, you should be able to kind of uh, get the help as an assistant to ask questions or to complete a particular task.
So this copilot use the content that is created or the or the found for a particular product as a specific information for its result. We can talk about that uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot works along with you in the productivity and communication app like PowerPoints, Outlook, by assisting you in creating effective documents, creating effective Excels, presentations, emails, and many other ways. So it's basically become an assistance with you. It will keep prompting what you're supposed to do. You must have seen a lot of assistance activity has gone into those Microsoft 365 application, right from the Word to Excel to a PowerPoint to an email, the Outlooks, and so on and so forth. So these are applied Gen AI means internally the Gen AI is being applied and creating a product out of the Gen AI and attached with the root product as an assistant to the root product. So anybody who wants to go and create a presentation. So it will go and allow you to quickly create the presentations by putting a context on what that presentations you are about to create. So Copilot is going to bring the specific content right in front of you. So you just need to go and arrange and organize them and make the presentations and make them up and running. So when you talk about the copilot in real context, which is being used today with those uh, product already, So like right from the Microsoft Edge browser, a copilot enables you to summarize the page you are currently browsing or to generate the new content while you are sitting in that particular page inside the Microsoft Edge browser. Microsoft Bing, Bing engine provides a copilot to help when the browsing or searching an internet by generating the natural language queries based on the context rather than just finding the result in an index page. Typically it was done before. Now you can create a context around what you have asked. Accordingly, they can organize the data, the outcome, the result and get you for you. The last one is the GitHub Copilot, as you can see, support the software developer. Helping them write. Documents and test code. You can document the code, you can test the code, you can write a test case for your code with the help of Copilot. That is GitHub Copilot at the end. And now the Copilot is going to be used in almost everywhere because we need that assistance to work with us to quickly complete your task. And hence the productivities. So if I have taken two days to complete a task, it need to be done in two hours and that is the objective. So do less and get more. The copilot will bring that capability to. The table and we should be able to adopt quickly to the copilots to enhance the productivities no matter from where you have come from. Because you can build your own copilot tomorrow and you can club that copilot with your business applications that is being represented by your own business domain or you are addressing your business. Context. So along with the copilots, these are 
the other important aspect of this, like uh, improve the generative AI response with the prompt engineering. And uh, I think uh, about the prompt engineering, it was discussed in the previous session. Because one thing we must understand the quality of response that a generative AI application return not only depends on the model itself, it is not depends on the LLM every time, but on the type of prompt it is given. So what is your question? Based on that also LLM can produce the contextual information rather than giving you a random something what may not be remotely uh, may be uh, relevant to what you have asked. So prompt are ways to tell an application what we want it to do, what my AI to do. An engineer can add instruction for the program with the prompts. For example, developer may build a generative AI application for a teachers to create multiple choice MCQ related to a text the student read. So during the development of the application, the developer can add other rules for what a program should do with the prompt it received. The other instructions, like for example, you are creating an MCQ, but every question will generate only four multiple choice questions, not more than four. Or you can just go and give a other other relevant instruction also that you know you have to add an answer at the end. All the above, something like that, that people can select the multiple options from a given uh, the questions. So the writing a good or effective prompt is extremely important. By doing that, you can achieve the better result when you submit with a clear and specific prompt the questions that you are going to ask. Right, so there are different way of designing the prompt like direct language or maybe system messages, providing examples. You know the grounding data as you can see right there. The system messages. Are set the context for a model by describing the expectations and. The constraint. For an application. For example, you are a helpful assistance that responds in a shapeful or friendly manner. And this system message determine the constraint and the styles for the model responses. That is in interesting. So you have to provide an example before I go and produce a prompt in front of the system. So providing example, as I said, can bring us to more kind of fine tuned way of getting answer from the LLM. It can also provide one example or multiple example. This is basically called as a one sort learning or maybe with uh, with a few 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 example so it depends like we are going to look at what basically that uh, the example is all about while we'll be interacting with the gen ai llm model but as you can see the llm generally support one sort learning in which response can be generated without a prior example. How, however, you can also provide a few example response known as a few sort learning. So visit the castle in the morning before a crowd arrives. 
So that is one example that is being given to the LLM that the LLM has to work after setting up this example based on the prompt the user is going to ask, user is going to write. OK, so we talked about few things from the beginning. I started with the fundamental of Gen AI. Since you have been learning the generative AI and their respective implementations and the use cases in the past. So I have just extended the same conversations to the next level. Now we are going to look at few implementation that is being done by the technology vendor like Microsoft. So in real practice, in the real implementations, what is being done by the Microsoft to use those LLM, what we are talking about. So we talk about the internal architecture of the LLM, how LLM is going to create a model while that is they are going to use the train the data. So we talk about tokenizations. We talk about the transformers with the two blocks. We talk about the attention. So these are basically, as I say, the inner working of the LLM. Then we talk about the promptings. So while you are interacting with an LLM, so you have to be more precise. You have to be more clear with what you are asking. So prompting is not just a science. It could be sometime with a pure arts. So how beautifully you can write a prompt to get things out of the AI system, out of the LLM. And we talk about the applied AI also, Gen AI with the help of co-pilots. So co-pilot become an assistant today to those existing applications. So while you are working on those applications, the co-pilot can assist you to enhance the productivities. So you are about to create a PPT, but you have an idea in your mind, but you are not able to figure out the right images, you know, right sketches. So that you can take help from the co-pilot that is associated with the PowerPoint itself. So this is something like, you know, the co-pilot is going to help you in coming days. But these are applied the Gen AI. Gen AI is being internally applied to do this kind of activities along with your day-to-day -day work. So co-pilot will be becoming more smarter every day because you would be creating your own co-pilot based on your own business data, based on your own context that you are working within your organization. It's not just a M60 365 application copilot or Windows copilot or GitHub copilot, what we have discussed in order to work with the codes for the developers, for the testers, and so on and so forth. So before we go to the kind of uh, the actual topic of the today's webinar that is Microsoft Azure OpenAI services, which is backed by the OpenAI LLM model. So I just wanted to quickly take you through a kind of co pilot. So, how this co pilot is being kind of uh, used in today's context, the one or two examples that I can walk you through to understand uh, the inbuilt co-pilot along with the few applications already from the Microsoft. Like we are going to look at the Bing chat co-pilots. So how the Bing chat co-pilot is going to uh, help us in order to generate the content. That is what we are going to quickly look at. OK, so with that, I'll be taking you to my The another one, so just a minute.
so I can go. Let me share my screen with you. So I can go to the. Bing.com. I can go to this one of these options out here because I said this is exploring the generative AI with the Bing. Gen AI with the Bing. I can sign in with my account also there. The Microsoft account. So I'm just signing with that. And then I can click on the. This is where I go. And this is what we call as a Bing with the chat. It's working with the co-pilot. Which is powered by the generative AI. To give you the result based on the prompt that you are going to write. Because it is not just a typical search that you will be doing throughout this web pages. It will go and provide you the context also. So this is something that what we can see here. So bring. Is your AI part copilot for your web page? Here he said, ask anything. So I can just go and ask anything. What are the three pros and cons of traveling in winter? So this is the prompt that I am writing. So if I go and click on this. So they said this is the three pros and the three cons. Right, so this is what you get. It is more constructive way of telling you. Rather than just go and finding the content from the web pages. This is what being powered by the co-pilot. So you can also go and Write. Find me the three more pros. Now it is all about working with the context because. I have no clue in what context I am asking for three more. The pros is. So the co-pilot understand the retain the context. The context was something to do with the traveling. So without explicitly going and telling the pros of the traveling in winters, so co-pilot understood the previous context. So it cannot happen in a typical the search engine from a Google or a Bing when you go and ask this kind of questions because it's retain the context. Now, in fact, I can continue asking the relevant questions. The context would be maintained till then. So I just go and ask question like. 
where are the three places I can go to find a fewer crowds? So this is something that what we have. This is what we can see with the reference and everything that we can see out there. So still we, we are in a context of traveling that we started. Right, so you can go and look for the chat at this moment. So you can create, you can work with the travels. We can compare between the text. So this is something what the example that you are giving out there. But in fact, rather than generating a content, the content at this moment is a text that we are talking about. We can simply go and end these conversations by clicking on a new topic. So it means that is the flash of everything what we have been asking. So I can go and start with the another topic. So here I go and say, create an image of an elephant eating a hamburger. That is something that what I want to go and do it. So if I go and do this, Right, so it is working, so it will take some time to get me the result because this is the kind of the working in progress, work in progress that is being given to me. But in some time from now, I should be able to get that particular image that we have asked for. Now, you know that there are different kind of models which is being used to do different things. Now, in context of generating the image, the model is being used, which is called dull e D-L-L-E. -L -L -E. So dull e is based on the large language model. As your natural language input generates that particular images. So you can see this is what you get to see. This is the image that got created. The four images got created with this particular one that we have gone and used it. So I go to another topic and this time I go to the last one, the code generations. They use the Python to create a list. So I want a code. So you should be able to see. This is all about co-pilots. This is powered by the Gen AI. OK, so this is something. All right, so there may be. A kind of limited access at this moment, but yes, you should be able to see the code what we are and in fact. After the generating a code that we talk about, you can give a prompt something like translate into C sharp what we have given out there. The code that we have written out there. OK, so I'm just giving it because the code is not with us, but we can go and translate to some other language also. So 
So you can pick up the topic under the three banner that I was talking about generating the. Text generating an image and generating the code. So we can also go and. Kind of ask questions in generate questions, something like that. So what are the three examples of generative AI helping people today? So you can pick up any one. So every time you regenerate this, you may get a, another different type of three uh, uh, kind of benefits. For example, what the Gen AI is capable to deliver today. So this is what. Uh, you can always go and take a look. Right, so. I guess you are getting a fair ideas how the copilot is responsible for. And now uh, responsible for generating the content, what we are discussing in a form of code, in a form of images, in a form of a text. You can also go to the Microsoft, the Copilot. So this is where we can go, copilot.microsoft.com. You can also sign in there. You can see the similar type of. Rather than just going into the Bing and working with, so this is the copilot.microsoft.com. So Microsoft Copilot, as we said, uses the generative AI to enhance multiple things which is being incorporated to the multiple product from the Microsoft itself. So from here also we can just go and. Talk about the coding part of it. This is what I try this this one. This is where the list is coming in. So beautifully created, not only just created the code, but at the same time. It is being explained properly. OK, with the same context that we can ask going translate. What is the context that we have asked into a, another language? That's what I was talking about in the Bing itself. So now we are here we go with the C sharp, the other languages. So by looking at this kind of. Activities or this kind of functionalities, it means. We have gone to the next level of the productivity today. We can go and ask our. Application the browser. For the code that I am about to write in my application. And this is what the productivity. So you take a look and implement back in your application that you are developing. This is just a kind of showcasing the power of generative AI. So Copilot is implicitly used the Gen AI using the model, the LLM that we talked about. 
behind the scene and they become the part of the day to day work. So while I'm going and browsing the pages, so I'm getting all the information. So tomorrow you should be able to suppose there is a travel agency who basically do the business of the tourism who can take people and uh, you know do the the tourism business for them they may have their own co-pilot so when you step into their own tourism application so you can ask specific questions related to the traveling so precisely you are going to get an answer by taking an answer you should be able to book a particular destination so it means you do not have to ask anybody you do not have to rely on any human so you can rely on the application because application will allow you to make decisions because the application will give you the relevant information that you are looking for that you can take decisions on those relevant information so that closer application is going to come to the human in coming days. So application will go and work closely with the human for decision makings, for knowing things, for working with different stuff. So it become one of the most or biggest contributor to the day to day. Work that we do within our organizations. You know, as as a form of co-pilot, what we are discussing at this moment. OK, so having said that, so let us go back. To my presentation. And uh, we saw the demo of the co-pilot, so you must understand the definitions of the co-pilot, what we have been talking about. And the motive of using the co-pilots along with your applications, whether you are working with PPTs or maybe Microsoft Word or an Excel or a Outlook, you will be enhancing your productivities by 200% if the co-pilot is going to work along alongside. Okay, so that is something that what we have learned but the bottom line is that we are only talking about the co-pilot but the bottom line is who is making this possible it is all about large language model what we have discussed the inner working of the llm so it is one of the implementations what we are discussing at this moment Now let's go into the next part of our presentation where we are going to talk about. Microsoft as your open AI service. Now. If you talk about what is as your open AI. As your open AI service brings together the best of the open AI's cutting edge model that is LLM and the APIs with the security and scalability to Microsoft as your cloud platform. So Microsoft's partnership with the open AI enables as your open AI user to access the latest language model and their respective innovations that is happening in open ai i told you the open ai is an independent organization microsoft has invested on the open ai and having said that the microsoft is taking and using the open ai's technologies primarily the llm which is being developed by the open ai the model which is developed by the open AI in different contexts. And you can make use of the model behind the open AI service, which is made available on Microsoft Cloud Platform today. 
the Microsoft is not only doing that, the Microsoft also has come up with some kind of user interface that you can test those LLM through the OpenAI services by providing OpenAI Studio as your AI studio. So developer can work with those models in Azure by using the AI Studio, what I'm referring to, which is a web-based environment where the AI professional can deploy, test and manage LLM that support generative AI app development on Azure. So NetNet, what is OpenAI? So Azure OpenAI, so Azure OpenAI is just a, another service along with the Azure AI set of services that we know, like cognitive services, where we talk about face API, computer vision API, the text API, document intelligence API. All right, so along with those API, so you are going to see a new API called Microsoft Azure OpenAI service. Now the credibilities the end user is going to get by having those services because you will be calling this service through Microsoft Cloud Platform, which is one of the most robust infrastructure in today's context. The infrastructure in context of resources, in context of securities and compliance and the governance. So because we discussed some time back how we can make things more responsible, how the AI can be more responsible to all of us. I mean, how responsibility we are going to make use of the AI. That is another concept altogether we must understand. So the Azure platform is going to help us to control those kind of unethical job that people might do with LLM. If the LLM can be called directly from the outside of the platform. And that's why it talks about role based access control the private networks, the private securities, enterprise gate securities, and all would be coming along with as your open AI service. And of course, it would be made available from the respective tools like SDKs and CLIs, or maybe by making a call restfully to the open AI services. Now, since the OpenAI is a service, but what are the model at this moment the OpenAI service is being supported that has come from the OpenAI? The number one is the GPT-4. This is the generative pre-trained transformer, what we have discussed. This is based on the transformer model, a set of models that improve on the GPT-3.5 that can understand as well as generate the natural language and the code. So we know that Microsoft partnership with the OpenAI enable Azure OpenAI user to access the latest language model and their innovations that we talked about. And at this moment, the GPT-4 model is the latest generation of the generative pre model that can generate, as I said, it could be a nature language and a code completion based on the natural language prompt. And you can get access to the GPT-4 model. Sometime from now, but currently. It is available with a restricted access. For the existing Azure OpenAI customer. You can always kind of fill up a form I'll tell you if I if you want to go and suppose you have an Azure subscription. If you want to use an open AI today, so how you supposed to enroll for the open AI by by submitting a forms? I will I will I will tell you that also. 
So you need to submit a form by telling everything that is needed to use the OpenAI service from your subscription. Now from GPT-3 to GPT-4 to GPT-3.5 can also generate the natural language and the code completion based on the natural language prompt. But in particular GPT-3.5 model, that is a turbo model, which is used by Microsoft Azure, are optimized for any kind of chat based interactions and work well in most generative AI scenarios. The third one is the embedding one, the convert that takes into a numeric vector as we discussed before also, and are use, useful in a language analytics scenarios, like comparing the text, the source for the similarities. This kind of job would be done under the embedding models. And dal e what eventually we know, it is all about generating the image based on the natural language prompt. You have to tell what image that you want. So currently, dal e model is under preview, means you won't be able to use in production environment, but you can still go and test. You can always work with the proof of concept by using dal a e model. OK, so that is something as of now the dull a model is not being incorporated with as your open AI studio interface, but you can. Always go and deploy the models and make use of extensively with this image generation. So we are going to go and look at all of them. What we are discussing as of now. Now the question is that how this model can be tested and deployed from my subscription and being used behind the Azure Open AI services. That is something what we are going to look at. So when we talk about how to use Azure Open AI in order to incorporate, in order to consume the model like GPT-4, GPT-3.5 and embedding and DAL-E, what we have discussed. So we'll first go with Azure OpenAI Studio. It's an interface like UI-based interface through which we can go and deploy a particular model from the list of model available under my subscription. And then, Using the models, I can make a call to the Azure OpenAI service to incorporate different tasks, text completions, or in a conversational, you know, implementations, or a dull ease, or maybe an embedding comparing between the text. So, Apart from that also, you can definitely go and write code by using the Python SDK. And you are going to see the generated code also while we'll be working with the OpenAI Studio. So the same code can be used practically to do that. Do the same. So, so once you do things practically, then you will get to know what I'm talking about. But net net, so we have given an interface to make use of those model what we have been discussing from the beginning. So few examples that we I can walk you through in this point before we go and practically look at by creating an open AI service by using an open AI studio to do all kind of activities that I'm talking about. But before that, I can just walk you through a few of them. So as your open AI natural language capabilities, what we see. So you may have asked questions. And you may have given a, a right prompt. So given a prompt where the user type in a text asking for a cooking recipe. 
and you can go, go and see it, what is being given to you. So application to new use cases, and this is in one form of GPT, the chat GPT, what we are discussing, combining the front end UI and the back end generative AI model available as a building block in OpenAI and Azure OpenAI APIs. Developer can still go and customize for a specific use cases on top of it. OpenAI's code generations capability also that we can see. In fact, we talk about GitHub Copilot in the past who's supposed to generate a code so OpenAI also partner with the GitHub to create the GitHub Copilot, which they call an AI pair programmer. So it means there would be AI with uh, with you to 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 write the code. So GitHub Copilot integrates the power of OpenAI Codex into the plugin for developer environments like Visual Studio Code. So while you are going to write code in the Visual Studio, so you can see a co-pilot in the Visual Studio Code who can give you the suggestions, who can bring you the code that you are about to write. So it's just to install the plugin. And after enabling the plugin, you can start writing your code. The GitHub Copilot start automatically suggesting the reminder of the function based on the code content, comment, or the function name. And on top of that, the GitHub Copilot offers a multiple suggestion for code completions, which you can tap through using the keyboard shortcut. When given information's code comments, it can even suggest a function name along with the complete function code. That level also, the GitHub Copilot can be used. As you can see, you are converting, you are writing a test cases for this Python code from the left hand side to right hand side. So you are asking for writing a test cases for this particular code in order to create this. Like code, we talk about the Azure OpenAI image generations capability also. So you can see it what is all about. So image generations with dull E, editing an image with the dull E and image variations is also possible. Different images from the same context can be bring out by writing a different proof, by incorporating the style of digital art. Okay. So that will basically generate the digital art image depicting the exactly what is being asked for. So I think it is pretty interesting and uh, it is pretty powerful uh, because it is kind of sometime it could be beyond our imaginations what possibly the AI can deliver today. And of course it is an evolving uh, kind of uh, evolving uh, a, a technology so still continue to evolve. It will go a really long way. And of course, the one thing has come out and one thing is being seen today, so it can really change the way we worked the one year back and way we are going to work now onwards by incorporating, by using the capability of LLM. And it doesn't doesn't matter from where we are using, whether I'm using from Microsoft Azure or a Google or a AWS or maybe some other platform and technology. But we are mainly focusing on the capabilities. But one one thing I must talk about because why cloud? Why Microsoft Azure? Because the cloud will bring the other relevant 
kind of capabilities on top of the open AI, like the securities, like your infrastructure, like your compliance and governance and responsible AI, eventually what we need to go and discuss. So with that, we will go and explore by practically doing few couple of demos in different contexts from the Azure OpenAI services. But before we jump into the uh, this demo, so we'll take a break of 10 minutes and we'll be back in 10 minutes and we'll look at the practical implementation of generative AI by using Microsoft Azure OpenAI service from the Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform. So till then, so uh, if you have any questions, you can always post your questions into the team chat. And uh, we should be able to kind of look into your questions in some time from now and respond to your questions. So then let's take a break of 10 minutes. And we'll be back in 10 minutes and continue. With the Gen AI implementations using Microsoft as your open AI services, right from creating the services and using the services, what we are going to discuss. OK, so there is a question. So what are the three different dimensions here is? These are the the features dimensions that we are talking about. OK, so uh, if you are asking in context of uh, I could not see your questions some time back. Yes, it would be the features like uh, the three dimensions that we are talking about in context of the vector one. OK, the another questions that I can see uh, how. Can we make API call with the copilot so that? Uh, we can integrate. Uh, oh yes, I mean that's what I say that you have to build your copilot. Uh, by by looking at the programming. Uh, I'll be sharing a couple of documentation, so of course you can integrate the copilot with uh, your own application. So building your own copilot, that is what we are discussing. So let me just go and quickly work, uh, give you that as your. Hello participants, as my colleague Chaitali has already explained it to you all like how you can redeem your badge. So guys go and redeem your badge. Those who are new in this uh, session, I will explain it to you all like how you can redeem your badge again. I already shared this badge, badge details on Q&A section. So guys go and redeem your badge. Guys, uh, just for. 
guys just you have to sign in on microsoft learn account then you can go with that url which already mentioned in q a section uh, so guys go and redeem your badge if you are facing any problem so let me know on q a section i will dare to help you out guys after uh, redeem your badge your badge will be visible under this achievement here you can see on my screen Uh, guys, once you're done with the batch, please put done on Q&A section so I can see who are done with the batch. Yes, I'm sharing yesterday batch also. Guys, I shared a previous session batch, batch also. Those who are not ready yet, uh, go and redeem your batch. If anyone still facing problems, so let me know on Q&A section. I will be there to help you out. Guys, in this whole series, we provided three batches. We provided total three batches. So guys, go and redeem your total three batches.
Uh, yes, guys, as RT has posted all the three batches in the chat box. Uh, any one of you are yet to get the batch activated. Uh, please make sure you get all the three batches activated as this Gen AI series uh, conduct all the topics are there in this batches. All the study material modules overview of the modules has been mentioned in this batch. Once you activate the batch, you will get the access for the study material. I will repeat the name for uh, titles for the batches as we have mentioned three batches AI 900, which is for Microsoft Azure AI fundamental. Then we have mentioned AI 102 designing and implementing a Microsoft Azure AI solution. Then we have posted the URL for AI 050 develop generative AI solution with Azure open AI services. So guys, make sure you get this batches activated as it contains all the study material and module for this series. You all can go and revise your study or you can go and revise the modules related to this topics through that badges. So it's a request to all the participants that make sure you get all of the badges activated. And if you are done with all the three badges activation, please let us know in the chat box. Uh, guys, we are working on the recordings. We will provide you record. We will provide all the recordings in uh, for the series on your register email IDs. If you have attended the webinar, you will get the recordings. Uh, yes, we have mentioned three batches for all the four days of this Gen AI series. AI 900 was for day one. Then we have mentioned AI 050 for day two and day three. And for day four, we have mentioned AI uh, 102. So all the three batches has been mentioned. Guys, quickly put uh, done in the chat box so we can move ahead. Please put done in the chat box if you are if you have activated the badges so we can move ahead with the webinar.
yes, guys. I upload this uh, recordings for this Gen AI series, all the four recordings on our official YouTube channel soon. So if you want to go and revise the topics, you can go through that uh, recordings as well. We'll share that recordings in two or three days on our official YouTube channel. You can go and subscribe to the YouTube channel also. The link has been mentioned in the chat box for you all. So you can have access uh, for the recording through that. Okay, now let's continue the webinar. Okay, so let's get started with uh, what we have discussed uh, from the Azure uh, OpenAI service. So in order to used as your open AI service the first we need to go to as your uh, portal so i logged into my as your portal using my subscription credential then i can go to my all service and i can look for an ai plus machine learning I can go to the Azure AI services. And we get to see the list of services. This is all of them under the AI. But one of the first services, this is Azure Open AI. So the first things we have to go and create Azure Open AI service account. 
So for that, we go and create this. So I can create. Gen AI resource group. And inside the Gen AI resource group. I can give a demo. Open. AI. Service. And I select the pricing tier under S0. This is the basic information, the name of the Azure OpenAI service that I'm about to create, the region where I want to deploy. And then the pricing tier, under which pricing tier we have to go and pay for that service because every call that we are going to make or the every token that I'm going to process because LLM is going to work in tokenization. So we have to pay based on the number of token that is getting processed by the LLM model with the help of the service call that we'll be making to the Azure OpenAI. So rest, I am keeping all default. And then like to create this as your open AI service, what we have discussed. So creating the open AI service is the first steps. In fact, As I said before, also to work with Microsoft as your open AI. You have to first submit your form. That uh, you will be using open AI under your subscription. OK, so that is something that uh, we must go and. Do first. So if I. Just give uh, I will be just going and giving you this. Uh, Open AI. Form so apply this. I copy this link. So this is where this is the location where you have to go. I get my notepad here. So HTTPS aka.ms and uh, OAI apply. This is where you have to go. And you are going to see a form and you have to fill up those information. And you are going to give provide the subscription ID under which subscription that you are enable the open AI. Like I'm creating this open AI under my subscription. As you can see, there is my subscription ID. You can also get to see your subscription ID. From the subscription link. That you can see. So if you go to the subscription link. It will give you the subscription ID here. So this is the subscription ID that you have to provide while you are filling up this particular form. Because only that particular subscription is going to be enabled from the request that you have made to use the OpenAI service. As I said, the OpenAI service currently in a limited access, so you cannot go and start creating OpenAI service under your subscription until you go and apply for 
this service. So you are going to get a response in 24 hours, less than 24 hours. Sometimes it can go up to 48 hours. By uh, but to, for for approving or getting an approval from Microsoft that yes, your subscription is being enabled to the OpenAI that you can start deploying OpenAI service now onwards. But this is something what you have to do as a prerequisite to get into this OpenAI. So this OpenAI has gone and created so I can go to the. OpenAI service. I can see this. I can pin it to my dashboard. In fact. So pin to the dashboard. So which dashboard that I want to go and. Pin this. This is. My. OpenAI service. Now, in order to make a call to the OpenAI, so I need two information. Now, the two informations would be the key and the endpoint. So while I'm sitting in my OpenAI service, I can get the key and the endpoint. So if I go to the key and the endpoints, I can see my key here. So I can say OpenAI service key. Sorry, so I just need to copy this. And then. Service endpoint. So I get my endpoint from here. So it's essentially saying that your service is up and running. Somewhere in the East US 2 under this particular endpoint means that is the kind of locator to my service where this service is up and running. But anybody wants to consume the service, they need to know this service key. So now we can go back here into the open AI. And we talk about. Working with the open AI studio. So this is where we can explore the open AI by going into the open AI studio. So explore and deploy the generative AI model. Craft an unique prompt. For your use cases and fine tune the select model all can be done. OK, using. The open AI. So this is something that open AI studio will do. So this is what the OpenAI studio is going to do. This is a kind of. Interface. So we can practice OpenAI. In order to interact with this LLM, what we have been discussing from here itself. So now I just gone into the OpenAI Studio. This is how it's look like. So the first thing it says no deployment as of now, so we have to create a deployment of the model. So I can go and create a new deployment. By clicking on that and I can see the list of the model. So I can pick up one of the model here, the GPT 3.5. And I can give this. GPT. 
model 01. I can create multiple model with their respective functionalities. So I can select GPT-4 also, which is the latest one. So for me, this subscription does not have the quota for GPT-4. So I won't be able to create at this moment. So this is running out of the quota under my subscription. But I can use some other model. So which is a special to the text generation. TXT embedding other 002. So I just use this GPT model 02. I can just create the second model also. So I got two model. And this is the model means this is the name of the model because eventually it would be an LLM. But yes, how this is being incorporated by Microsoft Azure and that is what we have to identify by the name. So the GPT 3.5 is being called as a GPT 3.35 Darbo with the 16K and the other model. So you can go and see the detail of this model. But yes, these are the LLM models. In order to generate the text, generate an image, generate the code, what we have been discussing through Microsoft Azure OpenAI services. That is what we are looking at at this moment. So, uh, and now if I take a look by going into the one of the playground because the playground will allow us to test those models. So by making a call to the service that we have deployed. So if I go to the overview of the service, in fact, if I go to the monitoring of the service and from the matrix, you can see as your OpenAI request, so how many requests that you are making? So number of call made to the Azure OpenAI over a period of time that can be seen. So I get one of them. The number of requests. That is what we can use it. Now I can go to another matrix saying that active token, the total tokens minus cash in the token over a period of time generated completion token the number of token generated output from the open ai model so that is also we can go and see as of now all of them are zero so we can go and keep the request or whatever it may be so i can keep going and adding one after another the next model i can go and use something like time response so what are the other metrics that we can go and see? Data in and out. OK, so in fact, uh, we can go and save to the dashboard also. So we can see what I want out there. So all three is request. data in my dashboard. So as of now, we haven't used my open AI service because my matrix is showing zero everywhere. So none of the call is being made to the open AI service. But this open AI service is going to use the one of the model that I have deployed. Either it could be GPT model 01 or GPT model 02. Let's go and start with the conversational UI that is given through the playground. So by clicking on chat, so that is basically nothing but some kind of conversational, uh, you know, uh, 
Yes, I mean, this is how the conversational uh, interface will go and come into the picture. Now you remember that we talk about the two things, the assistant setup with the system messages. Now specify how the chat should act. Use the template to get started. You can learn more on this. So you can use a system message template. So you can select different type of templates out there. The Xbox customer support as in. So you may be you are creating a Gen AI driven. A chat bot. Who will. Basically. Give all informations related to the Xbox product. For their customers. Or maybe support related. The queries need to be answered by this particular chatbot, the conversational application, AI application, what we are talking about. So as of now, we go with the default, whatever the defaults coming in. But we can go and change. The system. Messages. So I can just go and replace this. It says this system is an AI teachers that help people learn about the AI. So I'm trying to give a context to the Gen AI. So kind of conversations that we are going to have through this. The chat session that we are going to incorporate. OK, so that is something that we are going to look at. Now, subsequently we can go and add example. It's basically what example says. Add an example to show the chat what responses you want. It will try to mimic any responses you add here. So. Make sure that they match the rules you laid out in the system messages. So it is all about creating a context like the people can talk about because we are saying that anything can be asked related to the artificial intelligence. So what would be the first questions the user may ask? What are the different type of artificial intelligence that we have? So this system or this application. Or this particular uh, the bot that we are developing should be able to answer this. So there are three main type of artificial intelligence. So this is something what. Given to create the context. To define about the AI so you can keep on adding. This may be one shot or multiple sort kind of stuff that what we discuss. And I can go and save. The system messages with. The example questions and what is going to be answered by the assistant that you are building. But the specification of the assistant is is a system. They will act as an AI teachers who can help people to learn about the AI. So you can come back and ask any questions related to AI. So this. Chatbot that we are about to work with should be able to answer the queries related to the AI stuff. So now once you are ready with this. So you can go and start asking or start typing your question. So if I go and work with the first one here. So what we are saying, what is artificial intelligence? That is what we ask. And according to the system messages, the system is an AI teachers and that help people to learn about the near. So this is an appropriate questions. So we are setting a context of the question answering also. What are the different type of artificial intelligence kind of things? 
So we are giving that input to the LLM. So you can see the relevant answer that we are going to go and get it. So we can keep on asking questions relevant to the existing one. So how it is related to the machine learning? So we are going to go and get the very specific answer that is being asked in that particular context. Now, this is what we got out of the box. OK, this is what we got out of the box, out of the box in the sense like this is embedded with this Azure OpenAI Studio. Because this is what we call as a playground. Now tomorrow, if developer wants this capability from their application, so how to develop these applications to create this application as artificial intelligence based applications where we can go and ask anything within this context. So my context would be AI at this moment. Suppose if I ask anything out of the context. OK, so if I say hello. How are you? Uh, today. So this is the questions that I ask. Now you look at this. This is a very relevant answer that I'm getting. So if I'm asking an AI. How are you? So it says as an AI, I do not have feelings. But thank you for asking. I'm here to assist you. With any questions you have about artificial intelligence, so how can I help you today? It's a precise answer that I'm getting, so it means it's not that you go and ask anything. That you have created because since it is backed by the LLM, so you you can ask anything because you set a context in the beginning under which context that question would be asked. So that is something what we have to go and take a look. All right, so you have to ask questions related to the AI. So if you're going out of this context, of course, that will this particular artificial intelligence application will respond you back that you get things with the clarities what need to be done next. Now another important aspect of making a call to the Gen AI model. OK, and this is something what we call as a parameter. So if you see a deployment, I'm using this model, chat GPT model 01. That is the model that we deploy. And there is an important parameters that can be configured. To control the response that I supposed to get from the Gen AI. So the first one, there are multiple, but only two things that we are going to discuss. One is called temperature and one is called max response. Now when you go to the temperature, if you see what is the definition of temperature parameters, it says it, it is going to control the randomness. Nature of response that you supposed to get from this. The chat. That I am working with this, so lowering the temperature means that the model will produce the more repetitive and deterministic response means more realistic response that you are going to get by having lower values. By increasing the temperature value, it would be between 0 to 1. Will result a more unexpected and creative response. You can keep trying and keep exhausting the number between 0 and 1 to see. How you Construct the reconstruct your response that you're supposed to get against what you have asked. 
So I made it zero, like the lowest one to get the accuracy. And my max response, that is the num number of tokens, set the limit on the number of token per model responses. I can go up to 800, so we can reduce it because you have to pay by the token. So lesser the token that you are going to consume will be paying less. The more token that you are going to consume by setting the maximum limit will go and give you more uh, the, the cost. I mean, incur you more cost. That is what you say. So the API support the maximum of token placeholder and do not translate token share between the prompt, including the system message or an examples that is being given in the queries. And the model response once the token is roughly four characters, but it may not be, but roughly it would be one token equal to four character. What the tokenizations that we talk about from the transformer model that we discussed. So it would be a typical English text where your text input would be broken into multiple tokens. And approximately the four character goes into a token. Now, how many token is being broken into? For response and the request, the prompt that you have made and the response that you get on the prompt will be calculated under the maximum response. You know what is being said. The implication of this number, as I said, more size, it means you are open to consume more token, then you are open to pay more price. So you can restrict those stuff by using this. So there are a couple of more like the top also, you can go and see what does it mean, similar to the temperature in this control randomness, but uses the different method. So lowering the P values, will narrow to the model's token selections to the likelier token. So increase the P will let you the model select from the token with the both high and the low likelihood. Try adjusting the temperature or the top P, but not both. So either one of them. The frequency penalty present, so you can go and take a look. But the bottom line, what I'm trying to say is those parameters somehow is going to control. It is not going to break this, the flow or something like that, uh, that you are not going to go and control and saying you don't give me any result, nothing like that. But yes, you can fine tune your result the based on the prompt by setting the value against those parameter, but mainly the parameter, the temperature and the max uh, response makes sense at this moment. The rest would be an ornamental, so you can go and enhance more by configuring few more parameters as you can see on the screen. OK, so I'm setting a back point 0 0.07 to the to, 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 to 0 0.01. That is what I did, so I can just go and ask the same questions by using uh, making it zero so so this is one i'm asking again the question so if you just go back and start comparing between the previous and what we get you may be more accuracy remember that every time we re putting or resubmitting my prompt so every time so your response would be fine tuned. So that is the behavior of the LLM. So it's not going to precisely give me the same answer every time. So it will try and learn from what you have asked so far. So now I can come back to my dashboard. As you can see, my dashboard has pop up with the numbers. Data in the number of call requests that we made to this open AI. This is the open AI with the help of that uh, the, the endpoints and the keys. You can see that the completions that we see.
data in. So number of token that we have processed. OK, so maybe. The total because we have make a subsequent call that was the restricted for a one call that we are going to make the 500, but we have a couple of call that we made the three calls. The total number of token is being processed so far 642. The based on that we have to go and pay. So you have to look at the pricing model. How far you can go and how you're going to pay back Microsoft because of using uh, you know uh, your uh, open AI services. So now coming back to the. The other part. As I said, we are doing it. We are working with the parameters. Now if I say OK, if I would have been a developer, how am I going to develop my own applications to make a call to the open AI service? Now we are doing it from the playground, which is ready made. So now if we see the view code. There is a view code so you can get the Python code or any other language. Suppose I get the Python code. This is where the Python code has come in. So I can copy this the entire code. OK, so I can select this code. And I can go to my. Command prompt. Then I just open my. Visual Studio code and I'm going to go and. Kind of create a, a file called app dot. Py the Python one. I can go and get an extension. So this is where the copilot extensions that we can get. The copilot themes GitHub copilot as you can see. I was talking about. So if I go and install the GitHub copilot. As you can see. Get the code suggestions in the real time. With the right IDs. So this is something what so I can install that also. So on the fly we should be able to sign into the GitHub Copilot in order to use it. So I need to go to the GitHub. To sign into the GitHub because that is what we have to do. So later on we'll see it. So how. We can go and sign in with the GitHub to get it done. But as of now I'm going to get my the code that I'm talking about. So by just pasting the code that we have copied from there. So this is the code. So we're importing the open AI. And what we need, so we need the key of the open AI. So my endpoint is already being yes, demo open AI. So if I go and get a key from here. This is the key that I'm. Using I replace. With this placeholder and this is the API version currently we are using with the key and the endpoint. And this is demo open AI service open AI dot Azure dot com. This is what we get. So this is already being used because they have been making a call to this endpoint implicitly using the API key from an environment. And. Uh, so this is something what. You are talking about so like. Uh, so what is the message that you you are building? 
So we talk about system content. You talk about your uh, all uh, the 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 example that you set as a user as as a okay the response all is being set so far so we copied and eventually you are going to go and do the completions by making a call to this particular uh, api and behind the api you are using this model because that is the name of the model eventually we are using one of them the chat gpt 3.5 with the turbo one with the 16k or whatever it may be the model that we use so we are using the model in the back end against this api that we are about to make a call and we are sending the text message this is the message that i am sending and with those parameters like we talk about the two temperature and the maximum token like the other parameter also supposed to do the same thing so with that we can go and so if i say so this is what we say okay so the library of the open ai is in pb so we need to go and install so if i go and pip install so what installations that we want because we have added this open ai so if i go and install this open ai whatever the latest version so it should go and install this api because this is an sdk that we have to use from a pythons or a c sharp or some other language from wherever we supposed to make a call to the open ai okay so this is i have a bit of problem in in in, in context of this open ai pri private uh, library so we'll just kind of fix that one in a some time from now the api type uh, but remember that. Uh, so this is something. The programming structure that we have been talking about. OK, so this is where we have to go and. So using. Working with this migrations and so on and so forth, because this the open AI that I'm trying to call it. It's not supported with the use of 1.0 interface. When you come back and we'll try with this, how we can make use of uh, the open AI in the code by using an appropriate. Uh, uh, what you call or maybe I can just go and make use of that so one more time this is what i'm using can use the another one also all right so you can see this this is what we just do need to figure out uh, that the SDK and compatibility with my Python what is being installed. So I just need to upgrade my Pythons and work with. But my point is to, to just to tell you that how simple it would be just to call an open AI from your application by just writing at this piece of code with just putting the credentials that we supposed to supply with an SDK, the appropriate SDK that you have to get in. And you should be able to make a call. To this open AI. So programmatically what we saw here, this is what is being given. So nothing complex as of now, the rest we have to go and take a look about this, the compatibility of the SDK from the Python the versions that I have installed, I have to upgrade and. To. Uh, the rest of the. 
the equivalent services or maybe equivalent API that we need to install in context of the SDK, what I'm saying at this moment. But my objective was to just to make you aware of this. Apart from what we are doing from the playground, so playground is a ready made infrastructure, but we can take away this code outside of the playground and start using the way I want to use. The open AI service from my applications anytime from now. Now, I can go and talk about the different things like, you know, so maybe I can clear this whatever I am doing it at this moment. And I can go and You know, maybe uh, what we can. I can just start with a different type of prompt. That I just wanted to kind of. Get you into. So I just clean up the previous conversations that I had, so this time I'm going and with is a write the three multiple choice questions based on the following text. It's all about AI. So most computer vision solutions are based on the machine learning model that can be applied to the visual input from the cameras, videos and images. So a couple of more texts, more explanations. For what you are asking. So you are asking that you go and create the three multiple MCQ questions based on the following text. So with that we can go and make a request to this. So you should be able to see exactly the question. And. Uh, the options. And uh, it will be made very very relevant because my temperature is zero so it will try to maintain the accuracy rather than going into the randomness of uh, the output this is what we what we can see so we can go and change the context now because this is something to do with the AI teachers that we are want we are building. So I clear again. And I go and change the system message also. So here is the system message. I can go and change this. So I said you are a Python developer. So I remove. The previous example also I save the changes. So it means I'm about to write. Or I'm about to ask questions or about to write a prompt or related to the code generation. So if I go and. Write a Python functions name multiply. That multiplies the two numeric parameters. OK, so that is what my the prompt is. Let's see how my. As your open AI is going to do the job for me with the help of. LLM. So in this example, the th function multiply takes two parameters num one and num two and returns their product. That is the result that we can see output 50s with an example also.
All right, so. Yeah, I mean, like uh, this is where I can go and. If I. Kind of. Uh, Yes, this is I think this is perfectly fine at this moment. So what we are uh, looking at. In order to kind of uh, using this particular model, so if I go to a deployment, still we are using the GPT model 01. So now going into the next one from the playground. So we'll come back to the code that we try to execute here. That is because of my. The API, uh, my Python and. Whatever I have installed, so this is where. The the mismatch is happened, but yes, otherwise the clean simple code through which to make a call to the Azure Open AI. Now let's go and try to uh, explore a few more implementation. From. So let me just refresh this by going into a completion. So we should be able to bring. A model deployment first to work with this. So again, I go to a deployment, so let me create a, another deployment. Can go only with this only. So I go to the completion here. I should be able to bring out this model from here itself. So let me refresh one more time. Until we go and select a model, so we won't be able to kind of work with this. This is something that what we need to figure out. In fact, I can go and take a look what is possible under the completions we have been talking about generating text. Like working with translation. I was talking about writing an email. So it says write a product launch email for a new AI powered. Headphones that are priced at, because this is what the prom that you are saying. What should be the subject line of this email? What should be the body of this email? So you have to generate, but before that we need to go and select. A particular model. So sometime it may take some time to get this model there, but I can still go and. Browse. Uh, the another. One, so let me see. Uh, whether I can just retrieve those model that I have deployed from. So this is my list of the model from the completion. I should be given this model, so just a minute. So let me go and create a another service. So I just wanted to go and. All the service under the AI service. In the same, but this time I'm going to change the location to East US.
So let me deploy it into a different location. In the meantime, let me refresh this. And let me create this. One service is being deployed. So we'll redeploy this model and we'll see that whether it is applicable this model in that particular locations under the completion because this is one most interesting way of using your uh, Open AI. Let me refresh this. All right, so I go into this and then from there I can go again to my OpenAI Studio. So straight I'll go into the deploying of my. Creating the deployment for this particular uh, service, the new service. I'll go and select this model. Model 01. And we'll go and select. Zero 02. So currently I am in the STUS where I have deployed my open AI. Now I can go to the completion. So until that will be populated in the deployment, so but you can get an idea what we would like to go with. So as I said, I was speaking up the generate an email. You can see the prompt and you are going to. So moment you go and click on the button generated with a token, something like this one. So in so this is now you are going to see because your model deployment is not being associated with the call that you are making it. That is what is happening, but once the model would be populated into this drop down list, we can pick up the respective model that I want to use and subsequently I can go and work with all kind of completions that we are talking about. Look at this natural language to a SQL, natural language to a Python, explain the SQL queries, the QNing, generating insight, working as a chatbot. In fact, the classify the text. So if I go to a classify the text, it talks about whether it is coming under the business or tech or a politics and sports and an entertainment. So the following text, I just need to go and make use of it. So the prompt, you can see those default prompt and you can get an idea how you're supposed to write the prompt. You say that you need to write a job descriptions for the HR people within an organization. That could be one use cases. So they are trying to hire a people, but they do not know. So what would be JD for that person? So you can take help of chat GPTs, the open AI from the Microsoft Azure who use the GPT model behind the scene. To generate the content for use. You all like, you know, so in a different context altogether. 
They said write a JD for following job titles, business intelligence, BI analyst, and additional kind of metadata that you are trying to put around. This is the job description should be online. Uh, so job description should outline the main responsibility of the rule. So you are giving the additional metadata to give more specifications of how you supposed to get the result from your uh, the completions. So you should get a fair idea here also what is being done so far. So like the SQL one. So you are asking to create generate a the script for creating table or selecting record from this table with this specified field name. That is the natural language to SQL one. Generate the quiz. You have set the example also. Generate a multiple choice quiz from a following text. And you have given an example to set the context. OK, so this is something what we should be able to see time and again to go and practically look at those. Capabilities what we are discussing at this moment. I go to the model one more time. So these are the list of model that you can see. So we got this deployment also here. All right, so this is one and of course, like once you go and. Kind of uh, you can definitely go and see the code also from there. The code is going to maintain the uniformities. The same call that you have made with those the parameters that we talk about all of them. So we talk about generating code, generating content, and the last one would be generating the images. And that is all about dull E from the open AI. OK, so that is something. What we need to see. In fact, you know how. Uh, we are going to look at. Uh, yeah, so uh, in terms of generating and uh, images uh, from. The models that is being used. So as I said, as your open AI service include an image generation model. The name is Dal E. And it is an universal model because that is being used as of now by Microsoft Azure. You can use this model to submit the natural language prompt that describe a desired image. And the model will generate the original image based on the descriptions that you provided. So we have already an open AI which is internally connected. The service we have already with us, so that is going to be used every now and then. So six call already we made to this open AI services. This is a service from where we have gone and. Pin this uh, statistics, the matrix that we see. <coughs> from here onwards, so we'll go to this. The previous one from the same service. We go to Dale. OK, so I have to be Dale is not available. The is central, so I have to go to my. This service and then go again with my studio.
So we can go into the. Yeah, so I was in the uh, East US only which service that I call this. Ah, so I have to go to my second one. That is my service two, which was deployed in the East US. So I can just remove this now. So the previous one was done in my. So I can see it now when I go to the delay, which is in preview at this moment. And uh, yeah, I saw. Just a minute. Yes, so let me go back now. So this is the prom that we have been talking about. So which prom that you want to go and make use of it? So we are saying. Something like that a elephant on a stack board in a style of a Picasso. So that is what my prompt is. So I can generate this. That is what we get. Now we can regenerate this. So I'm going to get. With the same context, but it may be a bit of fine tuned image that we are going to get. So I can say. So this is something what I say a vacation location with the sea facing. So that is what. I'm generating this because this is what the natural language that you will be using to generate the images. As you can see out there. You can download this image. So this is what we see. And every time you go and regenerate. So 99% that you are going to get a new image with the fine tune one. So you can take a call what image that you want to bring in. To your. The target for which that image was generated so far. Now this is also you can see the code. The code would be the same out here. You have to only take the size of the image. That you want to give when the image is going to be come in, so it is going to give us an URL of this particular image. Making a call, it's creating openai.image.create. So you have to write a prompt like the prompt that we are writing the vacation location with the sea facing. So essentially, what I'm trying to tell you that this is so powerful in context of the three categories that what we have been talking about the code, the text, 
the completions that we are talking about, which is really robust. And eventually it is the images as of now that you are generating from dull E, the model which is backed by the LLM. You can fine tune this model by having your own data file also. Because now it is coming out of the box how the LLM was trained or what if this LLM need to be fine tuned within your own business context, then you have to get your own data. That is also possible. So it's basically you can use your own data with as your open AI. OK, so that is something that you can always do. So like for example, if I go to the. Again. OK, so I can just go and. Give. I would like to take a trip to New York. Where should I stay? Something like this. So it is giving me the list of options. So we can subsequent questions that we can say what are the some facts about the New York? OK, so before you go and visit New York, so you have asked two questions. The first one is. And the second one is. You can try similar questions about the tourism and the place to stay. For the other location also. That will be included. In our grounding data such as London or maybe San Francisco and so on and so forth. Right, so you will definitely likely to get complete response about the areas and neighborhood. And some general facts about the city. But you can modify that you can go and get some your data, how you want to respond to that when you talk about the new works and so on and so forth. Right, so that is something that you can see at the data source. Like if I go back there, so if I go to the data files, you can also upload those things. Or you can go to this also here. So you can see there is an option called add your data. Add your data source. You can get the data from the Azure blobs. You can get data from the uploaded files and so on and so forth. So it means on top of the LLM, you can fine tune by pumping your own data. That it should alter this default. What they are talking about, so you can go and. Upload the browsers of or maybe some kind of informations the Wikipedia informations about the new works and uh, suggesting some hotel from your experiences and so on and so forth. So that can be customized. By having your own data, I'm just telling you it is possible. So every time you do not have to bank on the LLM. What we have been discussing. So you can always go beyond that default LLM and get your own data and train them. Fine tune the LLMs and work with the specific questions with a specific answer that you supposed to get. 
OK, so we talk about all three things like, you know, the chat and completions and the tal E as you can see. But yes, what is being delivered by all three option is all about the LLM because the LLM is behind this OpenAI service. So Microsoft Azure has come up with those services who use the LLM, which was developed by the OpenAI, which is the independent vendors. But since the Microsoft has invested on the OpenAI and OpenAI is releasing their technology consumed by the Microsoft to get the robustness of the end-to-end -end solutions that we supposed to build going forward under the banner of generative AI. So that is the bottom line what we are discussing. So let me go back to my presentations here. <clears throat> OK, so what uh, we are discussing, what next? So we talk about the demo things here. We did a couple of demos from the OpenAI services. But finally, we are going to go and talk about the responsible generative AI. Now, that is what we started with. Now, the responsible AI is all about the guidelines that you need to subscribe. And this is being defined by the Microsoft. So it basically trying to create a standard. By considering specific. A point. Related to the generative AI model. So like these are the main point. Identify and measure and mitigates and operate. So identify the potential harm. That are relevant to your plan solutions. Measure the presence of this harm in the output generated by your solutions. Mitigate. The harm at multiple layers in your solutions to minimize their presence and impact and ensure the transparent communications about the potential risk of users. Operate the solutions responsibility by defining. By defining the development and operational readiness plan. So this is what a kind of the responsible generative AI solutions that what we can see. Now, if I go and quickly take a look, what do you mean by how this is being used so far? So let me go back again. To the demo. That I can quickly talk about. How can you make use of? Responsible AI in practice. So let me go back to my. So we are going with my. Yeah, so still we are there inside my. So I'll be creating. One more uh, deployment with. Uh, the turbo one. So I'm just giving this specifically as a turbo. 3.5 turbo one. So 
So now I can I can see that I can go into my. So I can say deployment model is this one. This is the model that I pick up from the drop down list. And from the the system message, we go with the default, whatever the default has come so far. This is the default one. Without any kind of example there. And I go and kind of write the prompt here. So describe the characteristics of Scottish people. And I just go and click on this. API deployment for this resource does not exist if you create the deployment within the last five minutes, so please wait. So I have to just wait for some time to use this deployment. So let me refresh one more time. And I pick up the right one, so clearing this existing one using the default system template. So let me try again. OK. So at least the five minutes I have to wait to make use of this. OK, so let me see one more time. Last one. OK, so we get to see now. So what Scottish people? Characteristics, the Scottish people are known for their friendly and the welcoming nature. They are also known for their strong cultural identity and the pride in their country's history and the tradition. Scottish people are often described as being hardworking and resilient and independent. They have the reputations for being, you know, frugal and uh, resourceful and very value educations and knowledge. Additionally, the Scottish people are known for their love and music, dancing and storytelling. That is perfectly fine. So now what we are going to look at. So we go to the. Assistant the setup. And we are going to set up a new message. So the message is. You are a resist AI. Chatbot that makes. Derogatives sentences and based on the race and the culture. That is what we have to. This is what we are setting the context, the system messes. So give the model instructions about how it should behave in any context. It should reference when get generating a response of this particular information. So you can describe the assistance personality till it what it should and should not answer and tell it how 
to format the response. There is no token limit for this sections, but it will be included with every API call, so it counts against the overall token limit. That is what it's going to be doing. So I save this. Right, so that is the new message that I have gone and say now. So I go and ask the same questions. Changing the default messages. Now and now if I go and. The system messages. So this is what you see as a responsible. And ethical AI language model. I cannot provide that derogatory or the negative description of a people based on their race and culture. And thus sentiments are harmful and disrespectful. How this AI got to know about this? And there is a content filtering behind the service. OK. So the output actually telling us or indicate that the request to be resist and the derogative is not supported. And this prevention of. Offensive output. Is the result of difficult, uh, you know, default content filter in Azure Open AI service. So by default, the Azure Open AI service is going to filter the content that is goes out to the end user. So you can you can create an AI system to become a racist or making a derogative statement about the people. Because you are telling that to do because you are you are you are going against the responsible AI principle what we have been talking about. So how you are going to mitigate the risk of this kind of development, it is being implicitly done by the Azure OpenAI because they will restrict to develop this kind of application by doing something called content filtering. So content filtering is something that you can always go and do. So you can also. So this is this is what uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean like. Uh, a lot of things is being implicitly or kind of internally they have gone and created for uh, this because we are using. From the what do you call it from the Azure because the Azure is taking care of. The responsible AI principle that you can't do whatever you wanted to do from your AI system that you are about to build. So these are the different things completions like bring your own data. So there are some templates like writing assistance, summarize in articles, create converts and so on and so forth.
All right, so. So hope that what we have been talking about at this moment. Is with context to the. Generative AI linking with Azure Open AI. What we have deployed. Some time back. And this open AI as an API can be called from your application. Although we are practicing through as your. Open AI studio at this moment, but of course you can. Definitely kind of. Write your own code because everywhere wherever we are using so we get to see the codes. Right, so this is the codes that we are getting out there. So the code is pretty simple. All right, so so what we can do, we can just go and suppose now since I'm not going to go and use it, I can go to a dashboard and I can see how many times so far I made a call. This was related to this one, but we did not kind of bring the statistics for this particular service that we have deployed in the East US. But those services are having a limited access and specific to the region also. While you'll be using, you just need to see it. The first thing you have to go and fill up this form by going into the AKSMS dot open AI apply. And then you have to go and create. Your. Uh, the open AI service. And then you can quickly practice your open AI service from the playground that is coming in as your open AI studio. In fact, if I go to one more. So there is this is your. Uh, as your AI studio, which is preview, we have been working with this, so you can also go there. This is also another. This is where you have to go and sign in with your. So creative innovations AI solutions, discover what you can do, build your co-pilot. This is what we get. Build your own co-pilot. As your AI SDK that you are going to make available. Infuse your applications with AI capabilities like speech, visions, and all of them is being integrated within one. You can always go and sign in. With the same user that you are using with. You can see that is the profile that we have. So now you are accountable so you can bring the services like you can go and. So what are the as your resources that you can bring into this? So you can definitely go and make use of this services from here itself. So the what Microsoft is trying to uh, give us like, you know, it is trying to create a kind of. Tool or maybe the platforms that we can easily make use of the LLM. By making a call to the open AI and integrating with the relevant services, putting them together, making us accountable for using those services by paying against those services. So at the end of the day, it is all about. The cost base, the service because it's not free. <coughs> you have to pay for every call that we are making. As I said, the payment model is based on the number of token that is generated by. 
are request and response. So before I wind up this today's sessions, I can go and remove this service because I am removing my entire resource group. So all the service that I have deployed will be removed from there itself and subsequently. So whatever the deployment that we have, so we can also remove them. So anyway, so since the service is not there, so this deployment does not make any sense. So there would be a cascade deleting for those model also. So I can clean my dashboard also because we have deleted all the underlying services for whom we have created this dashboard. All right, so coming back to the end of uh, this today's session, so let me go back to the presentation. So we were in the responsible AI that we have been looking at. So we must understand because this is something very, very important aspect and we saw how Microsoft Azure is given the restriction of uh, going after anything that is not wanted when you develop the AI system. So with that, I have come to an end of this today's presentations and thank you. I would like to thank uh, everyone for participating in this uh, series of webinar we have been talking about and uh, getting putting all these things together. It's a very, very emerging technology in today's context. You need to know the fundamental and then you have to go into the next level of implementation. So the people with the background of machine learning or maybe the traditional AI, they will be able to quickly jump into the Gen AI or the people who do not want to go for the development or fine tuning the existing model, they can use the Gen AI for the productivities like, as I said, M365 Copilot, which is driven by the generative AI to enhance the productivities in the workplace. To make a decisions for the managers and the leaders, the Gen AI for HR peoples who can write a job descriptions for upcoming hiring that they are about to do. They can create the question paper on a particular topic for the new joinees and so on and so forth. So eventually we have to implement. I mean, we have to figure out the different use cases the G Gen AI is aligned with, which is already being discussed in the previous. Um, the webinar, but I'm just putting things together. So Gen AI is for bottom line is the Gen AI is for all of us. The developer, the people who are coming from a background of machine learning or maybe who has no clue who is basically doing the day to day job in office for them. Also Gen AI would be use going forward. So we just need to look at so how this is practically possible. By identifying your role within an organization and map with what you are supposed to learn from the Gen AI. So once again, thank you everyone. So I'm handing over my mic to the, the back office and they will take it from here onwards if they have to announce anything from here. Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for this wonderful uh, session. I hope all the participants found today's topic, which that was hosted by Navjoti, sir. sir.
if you have any question and queries please feel free to ask as our speaker will provide you best answer with insight and and guys has already shared feedback form so go and fill this feedback form Guys, go and fill this feedback form. We continuously improve our webinar. Uh, those who are done with the feedback form, please put done. Also, guys, if you have any question and queries, please put a question on QA section. Our speaker will provide you best. He is there to help you out. Yes, participants, uh, we will try to share recording as soon as possible. Don't worry about that.
uh, those who are remaining, please fill this feedback form so we can wind up this session. Uh, uh, guys, adding up to RG, uh, we have posted all the social media platform links as well as the YouTube channel link in the chat window. Uh, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel as we will be uploading the uh, recordings on our official YouTube channel soon. Also, the social media platform links has been mentioned for all the pages for Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and all. Uh, so you you can go and correct us over there as we keep updating the upcoming webinars, workshops and series on our social media platforms. Guys, we are waiting for you all to submit the feedback form. So make sure you submit the feedback form. The link has been mentioned in the chat box. Go and submit the feedback for this webinar. I request all the participant, participants to make sure you submit the feedback form before dropping out as your feedbacks are crucial to us. Uh, guys, uh, for 20th and 21st of December, we have shared the same batch AI050 as that both the topics were interconnected. So yes, we have shared the three batches for four of the uh, series, four of the webinar of this series. We have shared AI900 uh, for the day one which is on Microsoft Azure AI Fundamental, uh, which will talk more uh, about the fundamentals related to the AI. Then we have shared AI 050 for day two and day three, which is develop a generative AI solution with Azure Open AI services. Uh, the content uh, in which this batch is related to the generative AI. So if you are interested in uh, in getting the topics related to the generative AI, you have to go and redeem the badge for AI 050. And for today, we have mentioned AI 102. That is designing and implementing a Microsoft Azure AI solution. All the three batches has been mentioned in the chat box. You all can go and follow the steps. It is the same procedure for all the badges redemption. So make sure you get all the badges activated.
Uh, guys, we are waiting for you all to submit the feedback form. Uh, please quickly submit the feedback on the feedback form which has been mentioned in the chat box. So we can wind up the session now. I request each and every participant to make sure you submit the feedback form before dropping out. So we can wind up quickly. Uh, those who have submitted the feedback form, they can leave. Also, we have shared the three batches. Uh, there, it was not fourth batch which we have shared uh, in the series. We have shared three batches for this four uh, days of series. I repeat again, we have shared the three batches that is AI 900 on day one of the series. Then we have shared AI 050 for day two and day three. And then we have shared AI 102 for today's batch, uh, today's webinar. I hope all of the participants have submitted the feedback form. Uh, we'll wind up the session for now. We'll see you in the next series. Also, we will uh, keep updating you all with the coming series, webinars and workshops, which we do. Thank you all. Have a great evening.